another online service for Redeemer One House Ministry on the YouTube channel. And this is truly a day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And as we all know from the rising of the sun and the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Family, we just thank you for joining us this morning in our online service where our mission here at Redeemer One is to tell all of God's children that His sovereignty is still sufficient, His grace and mercy is still afforded us, and that His Holy Word is still alive and true. We are in an inclusive ministry. We stand firm on the belief of what was said in Lamentations 2 and 32, that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with that said, family, would you bow and pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you for new mercy and new grace, Father God. And God, we ask this morning, oh Father, if you will just touch those with bereaved hearts, Father. If you will just lift them up and encourage them, oh Father God. For we know, oh Father God, that their hearts are heavy. And then also, Father God, we ask that you just continue to touch those who are still in the fight. Whether that fight be with corona, with cancer, diabetes, whatever the ailments are to the body. We ask that you just continue, O oh Father God, to give them wisdom for their mind. Give them courage for their hearts. And, O oh Father God, when it's all said and done, give them a testimony for their bodies, Lord. And, O oh Father God, we ask this morning, God, if you'll just continue in a mighty way, Father God, to keep just lifting up our medical professions, O oh Lord. And just encourage them, O oh Father God, and, and, and we thank Him, Lord. We thank Him for all that they're doing in the country and around the world, Father God. But also, Lord, we know that behind the scenes they have families. They have loved ones. They have, they have children, O oh Father God. Bless them. Bless them and cover them and keep them, O oh Father God, in a mighty way. And Father God, we want to take time out right now, O oh Father God, to just... Just ask from a humble position, if you'll just continue to bless us, continue to cover us, and, and to continue to keep us, oh, Father God. Keep us, oh, Father God, uh, uh, lifted up, Lord. Keep us encouraged, Father God. Keep us identifying that you are our sole source of strength, Lord. And as goes without saying, Father God, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. And it's in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, that we ask of these things. All glory be to God. Amen. Our family, this morning I want to, I want to jump into some scripture this morning from the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23 verses 1 through 12. That's Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. And I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. And God's holy word reads as, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to the disciples, the teachers of the law, and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on the other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect 
in the marketplace and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Brothers and sisters, beloveds, saints, uh, I want to talk this morning in the subject of I heard a word that was not for me. I heard a word that was not for me. And brothers and sisters, I, I simply understand that from an individual standpoint that we all have certain ways on our days of worship that we go about praise and worship. I understand in the spirit that before the corona and before all the shut-ins shut around the country that uh, we had options as to how we went about praise and worship. And some of us would wake up on Sunday mornings and gather ourselves to go out to specific worship locations. But then there were those who would simply stay in the confines of their homes. And they would get their praise and their worships at their homes. But whatever option we chose, we all tried to seek a word from a messenger of God. We wanted to hear a word that could speak to our spirits. We wanted to get a word to encourage us. We wanted to get a word that could create glory in God on our behalf. Now, family, I would want to say and want to believe that from a clergy standpoint, we spend as much time as possible with God in the preparation of getting a word. I want to believe that we, 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 we spend enough time in meditation and devotion and trying to hear everything God is trying to tell us so that we're able to give a word from God. But my question this morning, have you ever heard a word that was just not for you? In the words of my grandmother, sometimes her view would be she just didn't particularly care for the person who was giving the word. So her attention span was not focus in. And then I know sometimes we have a lot of burdens and, and stress and things that we're trying to, to fight and, and to overcome. Uh, and because of those things, sometimes they take up our attention from the Word. But then also, I'm not 
naive to the fact that sometimes as we're listening to the word from the messenger that we perceive the messenger as being judgmental and we could feel the hypocrisy in our spirits and when that happens we immediately get turned off from the word. I'm here to say this morning family that I I believe at this point in our lives there is no greater opportunity for the clergy and those called to give a word on behalf of God to use this opportunity to encourage people. I, I feel like there is no greater need in our lives than to be able to get a word from God that will encourage people. Now, I, I understand that uh, when we hear from God and we're in preparation for a word, there, there are certain things that we like to, to address on our checklist. Uh, we want to be able to discuss faith. Uh, we want to be able to discuss uh, atonement. Uh, we want to be able to discuss the edification over the, the, the group that we're talking to, that we're presenting the word to. And then we want to talk about those important things of salvation and to be redeemed. But I also feel that each and every word should have a degree of encouragement. It says it's in, in the book of Ephesians. 4 and 29, that anything unwholesome should not precede out of our mouths, but it should be something that is used for the building of our brothers and sisters, should be used for the building of our brothers and sisters. Family, that's, that's encouragement. And I, and, I, and I understand, I understand that right now uh, 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 we have gotten to a place to where we've gotten away from the encouragement aspect of Scripture and, 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 and we have a, an emphasis on, on other things. And I'm not sliding those things, but, but I know right now God is speaking to my spirit and he's telling me that now is the, uh, the, 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 the greatest time, the, the most opportune time for us to get back to encouragement. I also feel that a lot of times in the worship arenas, in the clergy that we have religion used as separation. It's an, it's an antiquated and it's an isolated word being preached. It's a, it's a word that, 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 that is used to not to encourage but more of a word of division. Uh, it, sometimes we, we, we look around and and we're, we're getting the word from the messenger, but the messenger is talking more about dress code. Uh, the messenger is talking more about the length of your hair. Uh, the messenger is talking more about the artwork on your body. Uh, some messengers have more focus in should a woman be in a pulpit. It's an antiquated, isolated, delivery of God's Word. And so I feel, family, this morning God has placed upon my spirit for us to just get back to encouraging one another. It, 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 it's specifically what Jesus was talking about here in the text. Uh, he, he's, he's talking about two, two terms that are, that are uh, 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 it, it illuminated. Two terms that, that we uh, feel that most of the time it's how we are being delivered the word from God. The two terms are hypocrisy. The other term is judgmental. There are two terms that 
-hmm. just for for no apparent reason we just feel that we have tuned you out there are terms that once we receive it in our spirit we really don't want to partake in any more of the word that you are presenting and so family this morning this sermon that God has given me, I want to get back to the basics. I want to get back to, to, to having an encouraging sermon. I want to get back to asking God to give me words of encouragement, to give me words that I can lift up my brothers and lift up my sisters and show them that God is a merciful God, show them that God is a loving God, show them that God is a forgiving God. I want to get back to encouraging. I felt that Jesus was specifically speaking to that in the text. As he talked about here in the text, you look here at verse number three. Verse three says, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. And family, simply stating is a lot of times from a clergy perspective, uh, we come off as a representative. We, we, we have that representative spirit. We have that, that representative delivery. But I'm here to say this morning that it's time out for representatives. And that it's time in for, for encouragement from the clergy position. What Jesus is talking about right now, he's saying that uh, 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 there are those who basically say, do as I require you to do, but I'm going to do something completely different. You do as law says you should do, but behind closed doors, I'm going to do something completely different. And family, I'm here to just encourage someone this morning to let you know that uh, we all have shortcomings. I'm here to just encourage someone this morning, family, to, to let you know that we all have a, a, a broken pieces that God is still working on. He's still fixing. He's still putting back together. He's still orchestrating in our lives so that we can become better followers of his words, better doers of his words, and overall become better disciples of his word. I'm here to encourage someone this morning if if you have been given the notion that, uh, that we all have gotten to a place of satisfaction, you've been greatly deceived. Uh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle each and every day for us to, to spend time with God and, and to, and to uh, maintain a God spirit. But sometimes, if I can be honest this morning, sometimes I just don't feel like dealing with folk. Sometimes I just want to sit around and be angry for, for, for the things that I see going on. Uh, uh, sometimes, there are, uh, 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 as Paul said, the good that I would do, that which I don't, and the evil that I don't wish to do, that which I do. We all have daily struggles. I want to make it very clear that we all are in a struggle with the enemy. And as we go to verse number four, verse number four, Matthew 23, verse number four says, they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. What that's simply saying, family, is there 
There are those who want to enforce what they see. They want to enforce the law. They want to, they want to make sure that you hear it and you continuously hear it. And they understand that you can't meet the qualifications. They understand that you're not perfect. They understand that you, uh, you have a, a, a anthropomorphic side to you as well. Uh, but they, they won't let up. They won't move the needle. They won't show any, any grace. They won't, they won't uh, afford any mercy. Uh, they just re re refuse to, to come out of their, their stringent ways. And family, I just want to encourage you this. I want to encourage you that uh, we have to be mindful of what we receive in the spirit. We have to be mindful of, are we hearing from God or are we hearing from man? Sometimes that's a word we hear is just not a word for us. And so if I could continue, family, and, and move down to, to verse number five. And verse number five, it says, everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. Now, family, I, I know just in, in layman's terms what that means. Some people that are, that are in the clergy position, they just like the cameras. They like to be able to, to get in front of folk and to... Uh, to be able to 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 uh, gloat, uh, they want to be able to 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 make you feel a little bit uh, unworthy because maybe you don't wear a suit to the worship. Uh, they want to make you feel a little bit unworthy because because maybe your dress is not the length that is required. Uh, they want to make you feel unworthy because uh, maybe you just don't have the attire that fits the worship location. But they want to be seen as if they are living out the holiness, the full holiness of God. Uh, they want to show up and they want to they get glory for themselves instead of getting glory for the master. If I could proceed, I, I want to dive into verse 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7, it reads as, They love the place of honor at the banquets and most important seats in the synagogues. Verse 7 says, They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. What that specifically says, family, is some folk love the red carpet treatment. <laughs> Some folk love to just uh, uh, being able to be worshiped in front of others. Some, some folk love to be able to, to stand on how much scripture they know. They love to be able to be able to use the Bible against you, to lift them up, but to put you down. Family, sometimes they just, they just love to, to, to be able to be in those, those limelight places so they can show how much time and effort they put into their studies and they want folks to see it. They want folks to hear that. They want folks to understand that it wasn't just a calling for me. It's something that I am uh, 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 maybe more intelligent. That's why I was called. It's something in me that maybe God knew that uh, I had more wisdom. Uh, that's why I was called. But I'm here to tell you this morning, family, and nothing could be further from the truth. See, see, when you're called by God, most of the time it's because you've been broken. Come on, somebody. When you've been called by God to give a word, it's because he, God knows that you're going to be giving the word to the sheep, and it's only because you smell like sheep. God knows that, that he's taking you from a place 
He's taking you from a place where you were broken, uh, where you were you were not in a good relationship with the Lord. Uh, maybe you had kind of given up on your faith. Maybe you were in a situation where you just find yourself in such a sinful mode. You just find yourself digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Most of the time, family, those are the people that God selects. He select those people because God wants to be able to show you his power, not your power. Let me say that once again. God wants to be able to show his power and not the power of man. You know, family, I would, I would like to, to put this in a, in a, in a strong context from a, spiritual and an encouragement standpoint. If you look over in look over in the Gospel of Luke, it, 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 it's one of my favorite parables. It's, it's a parable in which there was a an attorney, a lawyer. He probed Jesus with a question. He probed Jesus with this question. He says, how do I receive eternal life? He asked Jesus, uh, how do I get to heaven? And Jesus said simply, what does your Bible tell you? And the attorney says, well, the Bible says that love thy God with all thy heart and thy soul and love thy brother as thyself. And the attorney told Jesus, I, I got the God part right, but, but what does the Bible mean by my brother? And so Jesus gave him understanding. He gave him, he gave him clarity. He, 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 he put it together in a simplified way, and he said this. He said there was a Jewish man who was traveling. And during his travels, at some point, he was beaten and he was robbed. And as this Jewish brother was beaten and robbed and left on the side of the road to die, there were several people who came in contact with him. Jesus gave the depiction that this man is on the side of the road and he's bleeding, he's near death, but there are some people who are passing by. The first person who passed by was a priest. And Jesus said the priest identified the man's conditions, but did not extend a helping hand. We're talking about clergy right here now. We're talking about we're talking about the person who says to, to, to love thy neighbor. We're talking about the person who shares, says to, to share thy burdens with thy brother. We're talking about the person who says to, that with love and kindness is how I drew thee. We're talking about clergy right now. But the clergy was so in a rush that the clergy just ignored the man and proceeded. And then Jesus said, a Levite, observed the man. The Levite observed the conditions of the man, that the man was bleeding and, the, and that the man looked to be near death and that the man really needed some help. And the Levite did the same as the priest. The Levite who serves under the priest, the Levite who, who is kind of the uh, uh, second in command to the priest, uh, the Levite took upon the same spirit. Uh, the Levite showed that he had places to go, things to do, people to see. And so he left the man in the same condition. And then, brothers and sisters, uh, the next gentleman who showed up was a Samaritan. The Samaritan showed up and he, he found this man in great condition. He saw this man needing a hand, needing help, and the Samaritan stopped. He stopped and he gave response to the man. He, he stopped and he, he gave uh, treatment to the man. And, and, and the thing I want you to get this morning, family, is if you understand your Bibles, you understand that the Jews...
Jews and the Samaritans had a discontent relationship. Uh, they were not on the best terms. They, uh, they were not friends and buddies and, 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 and people that you, you hung out with. But the Samaritan did not see a Jewish man on the side of the road. I'm going somewhere. The Samaritan saw a brother who was in need. And because the Samaritan saw a brother in need, he did what a child of God should do. That we should encourage, we should, we should, we should look after our brothers, we should, we should lift up our brothers, we should, where they're in need, let's extend help. And the Samaritan did, family, I want you to get this, the Samaritan did what I feel God is telling me today that we have to start doing at the level of clergy and the people who are called by God to give his word, and that means to help up, to lift up. To encourage. Because if we don't have that in our message, if we don't have that in our sermons, it could be a word that nobody hears. And family, I would say this. The things that Jesus has taught us this morning in the text, I like to refer to them as the three R's. The things that Jesus has made reference to in the text, the things that he has addressed, the things that he has acknowledged, the things that he has brought to the forefront, I call them the three R's. And the three R's, family, I, I pray you get this this morning. I pray that it bless your spirit I pray it be something that you can take away from this message because the first R is representative. What representative is, is it's, a, it's just a place of, of disguise. It's a place, family, to where uh, we act like we got it all together and we really don't. We act like we don't need anybody and we don't need the Lord, but we really do. It's an area where uh, we can dress the part, we can look the part, we can get our hair done, we can get nails done, we got a, a sweet smelling perfume on, we got a brand new dress, but all you're seeing is our representative. And so, family, uh, what I want to address with the first thing of representative is it's time out for representatives. See, because one thing I know about God, he can't mend and fix a broken place that you don't never tell him that it's broken. He can't, he can't create correction in your life if you don't tell God you need correction. He can't give atonement over your life if you tell him God you got it all together representatives. The second all I want to talk about, family, I want to talk about Redeemer. Redeemer family is Jesus Christ. Redeemer family is, is the one that doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter what folk may know about you. It don't matter what you've been through. God can turn you around. God can, can, can catapult you onto a brand new road. And so, so, so it really don't matter how much you have done because God has more than enough grace and more than enough mercy to extend to you. It's a redeemer. It's a redeemer that, that, that we all need to know. It's a redeemer, a family that that we all need to experience. And then the third thing I want you to take away with the three R's is relationship. Relationship family is spending time in the presence of the Lord. Relationship is being able to throw yourself at the mercy of God when you need mercy. Relationship is to be able to just thank God every time he's blessed you and he's giving you grace. Thank God that he's, he's covered your family. 
Thank God that, that your kids are still strong and, and thank God you still have your health. Thank, thank God that you can look over at your spouse and they're still healthy and strong. It's relationship. Relationship will make something as, as, as minute as being able to put gas in the car remind you that you could be without a car and you could be without funds to support that car. That's relationship. Relationship is some family that I'll tell you this, that, that once you have a redeemer, God wants to spend time with his children. He wants to get to know you on a daily basis. He wants to be able, he wants to be able to address all of your needs. Not just the big needs or, 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 or the needs that seem like they have immediate requirement of attention. He wants to address all your needs. It's relationship. Those are the three R's, family. Those are the three R's that I pray today that you're able to take away from this message. I pray that you, you take away what Paul said. Paul said that he who has begun a good thing in you shall perfect it until the return of Christ Jesus. Family, I want you to be encouraged. Brothers and sisters, I, as always, want to just convey that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you make him your Lord and Savior today. Also, family, I want to just encourage you to make your relationship stronger with the Lord. It'll pay dividends in your lives. And then lastly, family, I pray that this message was a blessing to you and that you will go out and be a blessing to others. To God be the glory. Have a great day.